Breast cancer detection has become a real problem. We don't have a good test, particularly for women under the age of 50. Mammograms have their problems, as do ultrasounds, and the specialized tests, such as MRIs or MRIs with spectroscopy or special ultrasound tests. So we do need something new, and there is a test that's been around for a long time that's sort of been shunned by most people in the mainstream, and it's called breast thermography. The reason that breast thermography has been shunned is because it was a big deal back in the 60s and 70s when it first came out because it seemed like it was such a great test and everybody was big on doing it. But the problem is, is we didn't have the research to back it up and we were making conclusions about what those breast thermograms showed that oftentimes turned out to be wrong. So a as we often do in, in science, we threw the baby out with the bathwater. But since that time, a few countries have con continued to study breast thermography, particularly France and Canada, and it's become a, an approach that's used in their mainstream screening today. The technology has improved a lot. The sensitivity has improved a lot. Uh, the, the number of tests that are false positive has been reduced. It's become a test that actually should be standing on its own. But keep in mind, it was approved by the FDA in 1982 as an adjunct to mammography. But as we've learned more about mammography, particularly in women under the age of 50, and particularly in those women who have dense breasts, we need something better than what we've got. And that's why we're the only country today that's using mammography in women under the age 50 in the entire world. So what is exactly breast thermography? It's a way of measuring the infrared heat that the breast emits. And we all are emitting infrared heat at all times. If a breast has a cancer in it, it's going to have, and it's a cancer that means something, it's going to have a, a growth of blood vessels in there that's substantially more than what other tissues do. A process called angiogenesis is what I'm talking about. So when a cancer develops in the breast, it needs a blood supply, but it's not real organized blood flow, and tangles of blood flow, blood vessels develop that, that bring a lot of heat with it because blood brings heat with it. When you do a breast thermogram on, on someone, if you cool the breast down, what happens is that normal tissues that have normal circulation will reflexively vasoconstrict or reduce blood flow in an effort to, to try and, and keep heat inside the body. In the case of breast cancer, there is no neurological control of blood vessel flow in a breast cancer. And so it's unaffected, and basically what happens is that breast cancer will then jump out at you, and they're easy to find. That's how the technology works. We have very sophisticated uh, thermal imagers now that can measure to a hundredth of a degree centigrade, so small changes in temperature uh, can be detected quite accurately and can tell us a lot about what's going on in the breast. So that's how the, the, the technology works. In women who have dense breasts, it's particularly good because it's different from what we do in the mainstream when we do a mammogram or an ultrasound, a CT scan or MRI or any other kind of special test because these are tests that look just at the anatomy of the difference in density between a breast cancer and the surrounding tissue. But if a breast cancer has fairly dense tissue and the surrounding tissue also is dense because of fibrocystic breasts, which are very common, in women under the age of 50, trying to find a breast cancer is much like flying over the North Pole and looking for polar bears. Pretty tough to find. In the case of the breast thermogram, we're looking at differences in heat. They have nothing to do with tissue density. So the temperatures of the hottest ones jump at you, and those are the ones that you want to find. That's how it works. So how accurate is breast thermography? A lot of studies have been done. They're reported on the site. Uh, you, should, you can look up some of those studies for yourself and see what they show, and, and you'll find that basically the accuracy of finding a breast cancer is somewhere between 90 and 95 percent. And if you say there's a breast cancer there based on breast thermography, you're going to be right about 88 to 90 percent of the time. The problem with breast thermography is that you have to have a reader that's trained well and knows how to read these things, and that's not the easiest thing to do. There are a lot of people out reading these things that aren't certified, that don't know particularly what they're doing, and they're giving the field a bad name. There's also some misinformation out there. Doctors in general don't have confidence in it, even though they know very little about the technology these days. 
they should be taking another look at this for sure. And then there are people out there who are involved with the breast thermography industry who are saying, well, it picks up cancers 10 or 15 years uh, before uh, a breast uh, mammogram will. That's just bunk. Perhaps you're going to pick them up a year, maybe two years earlier, some of the time. Then there's a safety issue. How safe is a, is a breast thermogram? It's totally safe. There's no radiation. The breast isn't touched. A mammogram is a whole different story. There you're getting a big dose of radiation, and actually you're going to cause one cancer for every uh, probably 1,200 uh, breast, thermo breast mammograms that are done. And it's going to take you about 1,800 breast uh, mammograms to save one life from breast cancer. So you're not looking at a very high yield there. So the safety issue is a big one. Then there are a lot of studies, as I've said, that reference all this information. Check them out on the site. We do need more research. There's no question about that. But if it wasn't for the politics, economics, and FDA uh, that's involved in siding with the uh, mainstream industries, this technology should be on, on the market now. It is approved by the FDA as an adjunct to mammography, and in 2004, it was brought to the final committee of the FDA, where it was voted down five to four as being a standalone screening technology for women under the age of 50, and for all women, as a matter of fact. When we look at the people who were involved in that voting, you say, well, it was a close, a close thing. Four people thought it was good and five didn't. But you look at the five who voted against it, three of them had a conflict of interest because they were connected in some way with the breast thermography, or excuse me, with the breast uh, mammography industry. So what we have is one more case where FDA has got conflicts of interest that are related to big uh, pharma or to the uh, mammography industry or to some other industry that's involved in health care. This has to come to a stop. But for us, knowing that breast thermography is out there, if you can find a good place to have it done, particularly if you're under the age of 50, it's the best test today and should be the standard of what we use in our testing system.